welcome to This is Pikeville, a time we get together to talk about tourism, events, Main Street, and all of the great opportunities that you have to take part in in the city of Pikeville. Today's guest, Jimmy Taylor. He is our Director of Tourism in the city of Pikeville, and he has a guest with him, one of our newest events coordinators, and that is Tony Bartley. Not new to the city, but certainly new to the position. So, yeah. guys, thank you. And in a few moments, Main Street Director Minta Trimble is going to be joining us to talk about all the wonderful things that Main Street has going on. But we have a lot of things to get to. The summer months are, are the premier time, really, for events and activities in the city. But since we have Tony here with us today, I know, Jimmy, you want to talk about Tony and his new role and, and a wonderful program that he is really spearheading that is going to be a wonderful opportunity for some very special kids in our area. Absolutely. Tony's spearheading the uh, Challenger Little League uh, for the city of Pikeville. Uh, Tony, you want to talk a little bit about that? Um, one of our um, local residents come to the mayor and the city commission uh, with an idea of uh, starting a Challenger League for uh, mentally and physically uh, handicapped children. He was part of one in another town and just wanted to, to carry it over and bring it to, bring it to our, our city. And uh, the mayor and the commissioners loved it. They gave us the green light and uh, looking really forward to being able to start that up this year. Let's expand a little bit on what what this is going to mean for so many kids. It's not just for kids in the city of Pikeville, but certainly no. throughout the region um, that can come and participate in, in baseball and a little mm -hmm. league activity that they may have not been able to participate in before. Exactly, and that's, that is our, our main objective is just to get not only the kids inside the city limits, I mean, uh, Pike County, Floyd County, Letcher County, as far as I'm concerned, you know, you can come from, as long as you're willing to drive, we don't, you know, we'll not turn them away. We're not, we will not turn them away. Yeah. Exactly. And and the group of kids that that we're seeking to participate mm -hmm. and be the players in our, our teams are kids ages four to twenty two. Yes, um, as long as they are uh, enrolled in school, they are eligible to uh, participate. Certainly, they can contact you to mm -hmm. sign up or to maybe become a coach or be part of this yeah. event. But we really want to reach out to our school systems and our family resource directors. Uh, so they can maybe give us some leads on some kids that may want to participate that might not know about the opportunity. Absolutely. Yep. We're also looking for buddies for these children also. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now, each, uh, each player will be teamed up with a buddy. So uh, they will be there to help them um, like to catch the ball, to throw the ball, to bat, and just make sure that, you know, if the ball gets thrown or hit towards them, then, you know, the ball's not going to hit them. They're there for their, their safety as well. How do you become a buddy? That's a wonderful um, component of it's this league component. because it's it's really um, it's helping the kids, but it's also giving back, and it, and it has exactly. to be a wonderful feeling for the for the buddies um, to participate. Mm -hmm. But how does one become uh, be in the buddy program? You would probably end up calling Tony at his office. The number is 606-444-5129, or you can email him at anthony.bartley at pipewellky.gov. Or you can get a hold of me or any of our staff here at, at yeah. the City of Pikeville, and we'd be glad to direct you to him. Point you in the right direction. Absolutely. Um, I think a, a vision that I just thought about when you were talking about um, the buddies and, and being able to help the kids, a lot of our civic groups and organizations are are groups of children and old, or young adults that, that are looking for for um, an activity like this or maybe a student to mentor or maybe going into the field of special needs that would really want to, the opportunity to participate in our our challenger little league so a great opportunity for everyone but give tony's information one more time so we can certainly direct people where to contact them his phone number 606-444-5129 or you can reach him by email at anthony.bartley at pipewellky.gov it's a great way uh, if you're looking to buddy with one of our special needs kids, uh, Cub Scouts, little, you know, all kinds of children uh, and their adult, their adult mm -hmm. parents can uh, get some fulfillment out of that, I think. I think that's the right word. Fulfillment is something that will be had by everybody. You know, if, if you're a mentor, if a Cub Scout, Girl Scouts, and the parents too, you know, you're, you're so thankful for the opportunity to be, help the, to be able to help the kids of our region, and this is going to be a great component. Um, of, of what we're trying to do here and be inclusive of everyone. All of our staff is looking forward to this. It's going to be a yeah. great event. Really yes. looking forward to it. Um, we, Like I said at the top of the show, we have so many events that are going on, and we do want to mention and kind of give everybody a recap of our first 
Jeep thing, and I did say it the right way, you know, yes, because a lot of people refer to it as the event, but it, it is a thing, and it is fun, and it is, it is one of those, um, those events in the city that I feel like for certain will, will grow and just expand because we had a lot of Jeeps participate this year and a lot of people go through the obstacle course. Weather gave us a little bit of an issue the night before, so maybe not as heavily attended as what it was first expected to be. We still had still a great turnout. Yeah, we still had 50 to 70 Jeeps yeah. on this obstacle course that you're looking at right now. And the weather, why it didn't cooperate totally, was great for the obstacle course. Oh, yeah. And this is a multi-venue event uh, that we collaborated with uh, our tourism staff there in the Riverfield and at the Appalachian Wireless Arena, where they had RC cars. And uh, honestly, they had over probably 100 RC cars racing in the arena. And those participants represent six to seven different states they have come in to just run the races. Yeah. And and I had the opportunity to go inside the arena to see where it was set up on the floor. And I was amazed at how competitive oh, my goodness, those, yes, ma'am. those people are, those participants are, because they were, I mean, it was hardcore stuff okay. that you were watching. So, so hardcore that I think this RC event is going to grow next yeah. year to probably right in the middle of all the arena. Really? Oh, yeah, that's what Larry Miller was telling us. Well, there are so many RC enthusiasts. That was the biggest turnout in the arena was that RC event, yeah. and it was, it was huge. And it was great for all kids. It I mean, was, I have a four-year-old yeah. little girl, and she she thought she could, you know, grab one of those cars and start driving it around, too, which could have been a disaster. But, <laughs> but be that as it may, it, it, it's something for everybody. Yeah, she would have had a blast, I'm sure. I guarantee it. She also wanted to get in one of the Jeeps, too, but that's... A, a different, a different you, story. Those, those are expensive Jeeps they probably They are have. very expensive, and I don't know that I would want to get the Jeep that, that muddy, Tony, because you were spraying down, and I saw yeah. you over there working hard, getting everything ready, but, but it was a great event, and I look forward to next year uh, already. I look forward to it myself. One of the other events that we've had downtown, and, and we've talked a lot about, and something that, you know, when you see the smiles on kids' faces, it's just priceless, and you know you're doing the right thing. Yes, ma'am. Um, Chad Webb put on Fishing with, with the, the Kids. kids. What a great event, a great turnout. Uh, they were lined up from probably the boat ramp all the way down to behind City Hall. Uh, 800 and some kids, I think, participated in that with uh, a lot more than that fishing poles and tackle that were given out. Uh, we had a lot of uh, local sponsorships with that, uh, not only city tourism, but Walmart and places that. All of this is donated, and the smiles on the kids' faces, you, just, you can't beat that. Yeah, it was awesome. Also, smiles on kids' faces and their adults, and their, adults. their parents for the 4th of July. <sighs> I mean, we really, I think the city really outdid itself this year in putting on one of the best 4th of July displays um, that our region has seen, and, and if ever. Uh, our fire department and our police department came together and put on one of the best shows here in Pipeville that I've seen. I, I've not seen a better show yet. Uh, when it's 90 some degrees down here on the ground, up on that hill, it's more like 105. Mm -hmm. So they're up there sweating all day long so we can, we can have a great show and, and what a great show it was. I mean, we had uh, not only the fireworks, which they did a fabulous job on, uh, it was, um, we had uh, water inflatables in the park. We had two live stages full of music. We had face painters in the park. We also had uh, the VFW and UMG come together and barbecue and Pepsi donated their drinks. Uh, all this was free, absolutely free in, in downtown Pipewood. It didn't cost you a dime. You come down and, you, and there was kids wet everywhere on the streets. Yeah. Smiles everywhere. Smiles everywhere and that's what we go through for with all of our events. One of them, uh, the, a fun event coming up is we have our our races during the summer is the Rumble in the Riverfield and that's coming up on the 20th. I know Andy's really excited about that. Andy's yeah, super excited about yeah. that. That's where you get to uh, Bring your motorcycle, drive it down Main Street, and actually race it in the Riverfield. And also, when you're racing in between races, we've got live music, uh, live music, and motorcycles, and food and drink. You can't beat that. It is one of those things too that really has expanded a little bit. You know, we ha we oftentimes have the cars in the Riverfield mm -hmm. for the races, but the um, the street bike drag racing is is certainly something else to Which see. Which is getting ready to come up also. You're talking about the Pipewell Street Car Challenge. Yeah. That's coming up this weekend, uh, July the 20th, July the 13th, I'm sorry, in the Riverfield. <coughs> Andy's got four different classes, or I'm sorry, six different classes, uh, $30 entry fees. I mean, you're, you're not going to beat that anywhere. And for a 300-foot track, you're racing right toward the jail. I mean, where else in, in anywhere can you race toward a jail? Toward a jail. Toward a jail. And not want to be put in it. Exactly. That's exactly right. And not get put in it. 
Um, we have Zip Paddle Saddle that is in full swing. I know, Tony, that is something that, that you enjoy and, and one of the events and offerings that we have. Um, if you've not ziplined through Bob Amos Park, you're really missing out. You really are. Uh, you've got all kinds of uh, beautiful scenery, uh, seven different zip lines, uh, 1,000 feet, horses on, at the barn, uh, uh, horseback riding, through, through the mountains. Uh, yeah, through all our beautiful so mountains. Oh, my goodness. And don't forget, too, one of my favorite things to do, I mean, I love the horses, I love the zip line, but I'm all about pulling out a kayak and floating down the river and making a day of it. I don't want the two hour, the four hour. I mean, I want the whole, the whole day. And I'm telling you, that's something that you love, too. Yep. Yeah. The, the kayak and through the cut through is, is just really amazing, all the, the different scenes that you get to see. I mean, you get to see all the different rock formations and just land formations, the trees, the uh, flowers it's just really beautiful and you'd never know that you're in the city when you're down there yeah. at all I think that's what I love so much about it because if you're looking for a lot of people travel hundreds and hundreds of miles say maybe to Asheville so to speak to really get that tranquil feeling that you get with with their waterways and their downtown area but we have the exact same thing here all you have to do is put in the water mm -hmm. and just sit back and relax yeah we and take you down we work. have kayaks we have tubes mm -hmm. so you can actually tube down the river also if you'd like two hour four hour excursions uh, what I would suggest anybody to do, if, if you want to kayak, if you want to zip line, if you want to go horseback riding, yeah. call Dana, 606-794-9881. She will they'll, definitely. They'll book your adventure. You, you won't have to do anything. Just show up. Racing on foot season has started also, and our first night run has taken place with the Noah's Glow Run. Little Noah, yeah, you got to love Noah. Uh, that's our first night race of the year. That happened on the 22nd uh, on Division Street. Uh, that was hosted by Stephanie and Eddie Greenhill and their son, uh, Noah Greenhill. Uh, that's uh, racing for a cure for, you're going to have to say this one because I, I miss it up every day. Eosinophils. yeah, that's right. And it, what a great event, 280? Mm -hmm. Is that the largest. Was? The largest turnout they've had for that race, and it mm -hmm. just keeps getting bigger every year. I think it's also the largest turnout for any night race that we have had, but it was certainly a fun time to be had by all families because of the glow paint that you could the do with the glow paint, the glow shirts, and the, necklaces. And, yeah. yeah I would, they do it up, right? It's not just for the kids. And it's it's not definitely just for, the kids. for the adults, too. There are so many things that go on. Um, in Pikeville, but also regionally. And something that we are really working on um, is making our region a destination, but we want you to stay in Pikeville and, and play, play in the mountains. The mountains. Yes, I mean, it's the perfect thing to to get people here. And you're working so hard. And with Ronnie and the guys at Pike TV on developing videos and different um, promotional uh, uh, components to make sure that we draw those people in. Absolutely. It just makes sense for us because it just extends your stay here in Pikeville. So what you can do is you can stay here or you can go to uh, Stonecrest and go golfing. Come back here, relax, have dinner here in Pikeville, and the next day go to the breaks. You can go zip lining there. I mean, there's all kinds of possibilities. And I'm not saying this if you're here in Pikeville and you want to have a spa day. You can go to Allen at Pure Lux, come back here, rest, relax, eat in our local restaurants, and uh, shop at our local uh, shops, and and have a make a whole day of it. Make a whole day of make it. A whole day of yet, it. make a whole weekend of it. Make a whole weekend of it. Yeah, come exactly. Come stay, you know, take off with the family on a Friday afternoon, head head here uh, with an hour's drive or two hours uh, east of Lexington, and and really and really see what our region. Has, has to, to offer. offer absolutely so we're looking forward to inviting and having all those new guests in our area absolutely and Tony we just want to thank you for for joining us today for um, for our time and letting us know about the Challenger uh, Little League program that's going to be coming up that's something that we really are looking forward to that's and something near and dear to our hearts it, yeah. it absolutely is thank you something that we want to make sure all of our viewers and listeners are aware of is that we have an app that you can put on your phone, your Android, your smartphone, uh, your Apple device, whatever it is that you have, and keep track of all of the events going on. This is something I know that you worked really hard on, but it really has become um, a daily tool for myself and several other people to use as they, pl as they plan their days. Yes, ma'am. Uh, if you download our app for Apple or Android, you'll see uh, on the left-hand side uh, pop-up events. So. Every event that the city plans will be on that. It's already on that. And all of our upcoming events that we plan will be on there as well. And I can't tell you enough how 
easy it is to find out exactly what's going on in downtown Pikeville every single day. It really is just another tool and a component that we have to offer everyone to make sure they know what is going on. And I have to, Minta Trimble, our Main Street Director, has joined us now. And I got to attend Dinner and White for the first time this year. First time. The very <laughs> first time. The very first time. And was um, I'd always wanted to be there, but scheduling conflicts happened. And it, it turned out that we could be there this year. Perfect weather, beautiful day, and a huge, huge turnout. It was, Jill. It was beautiful. And it was the largest turnout that we had so far, over 400, like 425 people. Mm -hmm. It was fantastic. It seems that it rains the first couple of weeks in June, and we've been fortunate that we have it the third week in June. It's kind of working out. So it's Father's Day weekend, but it, it was just gorgeous. And, and some new things this year. I know the UPAC dancers were there to provide some entertainment and to kind of get the party started, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. When we talked with them, we, uh, we really wanted to give another, you know, kind of entertainment, but also to be something from the community. And when we went to talk with Conda Little, she was just very receptive and said, I have some young ladies that are involved and would love to perform. So we said, can you make sure that their costumes are white? And we wanted something a little bit like... Um, different than you'd probably see and they used awesome props they used a chair they danced and it was just gorgeous for those young ladies and just to give them an opportunity to show the community what they've learned they're learning at the UPIC School of Dance. All of those ladies that participated have been students of Condas or um, or the University of Pikeville Dance Program since they were small. Exactly uh, and, and I, I thought it was really interesting to see. I looked over at one table and I thought, oh, this couple, th these people haven't been here before. This is so good that we're getting more people to come to Dinner and White, that they think it's a night out that, and they can socialize with friends. And then I realized that they were the mother, the father, and the grandparents and one of the da dancers. I thought, this is just, you know, just a, a, a great way. So we've already started working with them for next year and with a, uh, an entertainer from Louisville that's going to add to their dance team. So Conta has been very receptive to something new for next year. It, it was just one of the, the most beautiful events. And you also had um, um, Polly Hollow mm -hmm. and Dilling Barrels, Barrels were there to, uh, to showcase their products. And that gives some people that may have not had a chance to tour the distillery or to learn about Polly Hollow a chance to see something else that our region has to offer. Right. It, it is regional. And, it, it, you know, both of those, though, are in Pike County. Mm -hmm. Polly Hollow is located in Forest Hills, Kentucky. And they're a distillery that makes moonshine. And then, of course, we have our ones on 2nd Street that we're so proud of to call our, our hometown. Mm -hmm. And um, they have formed a great alliance together. So we had a table for each. Each of them brought um, mixed cocktails made out of moonshine. And that was, a, it was a little different because you didn't have to stand in line for something if you wanted to taste the moonshine. You could walk over and experience the Johnny Appleseed from Dueling mm -hmm. Barrels which was made with one of their, uh, what, their apple pie moonshine? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, and then from Polly Hollow, they had the blackberry lemonade moonshine, and it was made with blackberry jelly from one of the local farmers here. From, from Charlie Pinson. Pinson. Yep. Yeah. From Joyce and Charlie. It's, yeah, so that just gives us a sense of the community as to the way it should be. And we had so many great sponsors to that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't say enough about the businesses in Pikeville and the surrounding area that want, you know, to showcase the community through their sponsorship and we're very proud of that. Yeah and of course the big prize of the night you don't go to an event every day that gives away a diamond mm, right? No, no. You don't. not just a little diamond but a diamond. Right it was three-quarter carat we want to thank Hefner's Jewelry for that and you know Hefner's got their start in downtown on Carolina Avenue and David I know he is what third, third generation third yeah. generation and I knew his mom and and his dad and, and it was just an honor when we called him and that came about from our uh, committee chairman as Suetta Clevenger and Tim Collins, they approached him and said, you know, would you like to be involved? And he was like, you know, I really do want to give back. So it was a great night for him and for everyone else that gave. Well, we had a couple other gift baskets too, Julian mm -hmm. Barrels, Polly Hollow. And we want you to know that next year that it's going to be the third weekend in June. And we hope that everybody can join us and start looking around in January because this year, you know, it got kind of like everybody waits to the last minute. But I think we're going to have a different concept is that waiting to the last minute might mean that you not get the seat that you want. Right. You know how on an airplane you can kind of Fix reserve right. your seat and then sometimes you have to pay a little bit more for a little bit better seat. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to maybe look at that and maybe that will entice people to do things a little earlier which will free us up to have a little bit better planning.
Well, I look forward to it again next year, and it is really one of the most, if not the most beautiful and a premier event that we have in the city during the summer months. And I know um, the planning is already underway, and I can't wait to see what you and the Main Street Committee come up with for next year, because I know it will be spectacular. Well, and I, I do, I want to take this uh, minute to thank, you know, UMG and the City of Pikeville. You know, the Main Street program is under the City of Pikeville. A lot of people don't realize what it is. They think it's one street, but it's not. It's the, it's the whole downtown district, pretty much, from Hibbert Street down to Handley, and it's the traditional place where people used to go and do their commerce. But we cannot make that beautiful scene without UMG and, and the city and the workers. I know Jimmy was out there that morning at 7.30, and Andy and, and Tony as well. So the board, everyone, so many volunteers. It was great. Brian Morse. Yeah, yeah. You know, when we think about that, that undertaking and getting all the chairs and the tables out for 450 people, you know, you think, how much can we have that manpower? So Brian was good enough to lend us, you know, some of his um, his, his program that, mm -hmm. you know, and volunteers the for the Appalachian community. And also Wireless Arena. Yeah, those guys are oh, awesome. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. and, From uh, sun up to sundown, they're there setting up tables, chairs, chairs. helping hang decorations. Uh, you just you can't beat them for a workforce either. Well, and, you know, it's just it's just one big team effort. And, Absolutely. you know, it's not a City of Pikeville event. It's not a Main Street event. It's a community thing that we want everybody to join in. And, and we work. love it. Teamwork makes a dream work. There you go. It is. <laughs> oh, I like it, that. It is, that sounds like a good T-shirt. It, it is a good T-shirt. <laughs> And it does run like a well-oiled machine. I mean, there are so many different moving parts and so many different components that make that one that one night, those few hours come together. But what an amazing opportunity and what an amazing experience it is for it's the people good. in attendance. And what people, you know, I want them to know from this is this, this is a fundraiser. Pikeville Main Street is a 501c3. We're a nonprofit organization. So when we have these, this is not monies to be spent on whatever. This is monies to be put back down into re revitalization for downtown and that's Main Street's whole mission is that it's the most important job of a community is to make sure their downtown is revitalized. So those monies always try to go towards something that brings people downtown. So Jimmy has a chance in his tourism daily duties to say I have a great downtown because these certain little things was brought by Main Street and these certain big things was brought by the city so we're very thankful for that. All working together. I know um, we've talked before about our downtown incentives mm -hmm. for uh, new businesses and existing Steve businesses, businesses. And, and that is something that is really being well received and we have three businesses already that have now been awarded many so I'll let you talk about those two. We do. We have three businesses. The first one that we started with was Southern Biscuit and Grill, and that's located on 2nd and the corner of Caroline Avenue. is just a great little place that you can get lunch and breakfast, and now they've extended their hours. Yeah, their biscuits are a half pound. I mean, they are the biggest biscuit biscuits ever. I've, I've ever seen, and man, are they good. Okay. Oh, yes. Right. So when we started working with them, we also wanted to promote them in the way that we were replying to the community's request. Two years ago, Main Street did a survey as to the type of businesses that the community wanted to see downtown, and one was a breakfast place. So when we worked with them and they said, you know, we want to be something the community wants, and they were received by the incentive package, that was, that came about. Then another business that's coming up soon uh, is going to be Broken Throne, and that's going to be located there where uh, Slice used to be. And the owner of Slice, along with some other partners, is going to start a new brewery in downtown. So we're very excited about that. Um, one of the things that a lot of downtown communities is seeing to help with economic development is the creation of breweries. It is. I mean, it, it's, it's a fun social thing that doesn't involve an overindulgence. It involves a craft, which is something that artisans are, can relate to. So it still gives you a great experience. So them as well as Lincoln Road. Lincoln Road is a coffee, uh, kind of like a giant machine of able to roast beans mm -hmm. as well, but also get a cup of coffee. And that's going to be located to the left inside of Blue Raven. So those three businesses right now are the recipients of money of the incentive program, which is applicable to business, current businesses, meaning property owners, someone that wants to um, think about starting a business in town, and the ones that are there. So we have three different categories that you can look at to receive monies from the city set aside and is funneled through the Main Street program. We talk about your events that you have and another fun event coming up and I know it, we're here in, in July but it will be here before you know it and that's the wine, wine tasting, tasting and retail, retail gating. Right. Um, you know everybody thinks what can you do different but sometimes just building on what you have started or adding to that is, is an experience that we we found out really works. The retail and wine tasting event this is going into our Third year? Third year. Third year. So that event was created to really highlight our merchants 
and we know that you know downtown is probably never going to be the place that you would consider all of your needs for retail it's becoming more of an experience economy so the ones that are there get that because we've, we've told them let's work together to showcase what you have let's bring it out to the street during this event let's make it a fun thing for people to meander in and out so we paired that with wine tasting and the winery is from Lawrenceburg Kentucky but they're hometown natives of Elkhorn City that's Joe and Francine um, Sloan and so we're so excited because this year we're going to invite more wineries it's going to be larger on Division Street, we're hoping to include uh, a word that, a two blank blank word that we've been working on for a while, and that's food trucks. And so we're really excited about that, and large games to where people can hang out, experience a different type of cuisine from a food truck, play some games, but then experience something, you know, through the retail and wine tasting. And the merchants get such a great sense of involvement with, with, with this. And a great turnout, too. A great turnout. Yeah, yeah. and it's, and if, if we have good weather, it, it is always heavily attended and certainly something that people look forward to and you really make a day of it. And mark your calendar for that. That's September 28th. And I wanted to go back and say we were talking about the app. I had someone in my office the day before yesterday and I have this large calendar of all city events. And they're like, can I get a copy of that? And I pulled up my phone and I said, right here it is. It's right the it app. Is. You know, and I said, all you have to do is download the City of Pikeville app and visit Pikeville right here. and. That's that calendar. Click it and you got Click all the Click it and go. So we, it. all the Main Street events are on there as well as fundraisers too. And if, you, if you're if you on the app and you want to swing by the new arena, and we always say, we, we are getting used to saying the, the, arena. the arena, the Appalachian Wireless Arena, stop in there to the Visitor Center uh, because it gives all kinds of information, write cards on things that are going on around the area. I've got some, uh, some vendor information. Local and regional rack cards. I've got Pavel branded shirts, mugs keychains. You can also get some dueling barrels branded shirts for our new motorcycle map that we just put out that has the uh, dueling barrels uh, circle in it. Uh, I don't have a picture of that shirt yet, but uh, stop by the visitor center and you can pick up one today. Yeah, if you saw the video there, there's also a little kiosk there that you can book events. You can book mm -hmm. events. You can also book tickets for the uh, Appalachian Wire Arts Arena as well. Oh, even and better. And the Appalachian Wire Appalachian Center for the Arts. That's right. It's all about the app, isn't it? It's all about the app. <laughs> the app. Your app. That's exactly right. Exactly right. Guys, thanks so much for your time today. There's always so much going on in our city that we want to let people not only in town know about, but also on a regional level too, because as we say, you, you come to Pikeville to stay, but you play in the mountains, and certainly we want to be the host for everybody who wants to have that experience. Absolutely, Jill. Jimmy Taylor. Minta, thank you. We thank want to thank you. Tony for being with us today, too. Always great information, and we'll visit again soon. Thank you, Jill. This has been This is Pikeville. Thank you so much for joining us.